I, I use that reference there on verse 8 a lot. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, it seems, it seems, and it's not just us, but it's, it's been my experience and even in my own life early on, uh, back in and out of recovery is, the only time I really sought the Lord was when, you know, things weren't going too good. <laughs> you know, the old foxhole prayers, right? Um, and even though he was good and brought me out of them, I still like the taste of other things. And I ended up back in a point in my life where I had to cry out again, right? Um, so we have to cry out to God. And when he answers our prayers, we need to stay the course. Uh, so um, the last couple of weeks, we've been, this is the fourth uh, of our sermon series, the first the fourth Sunday on the 12 laws of life recovery. So today we're looking at 10, 11, and 12. And of course, we like the reward part, which is healing, closure, and security. There's a couple here. Restitution, you know, is, is, doesn't take a lot of, uh, except, you know, on our own. Uh, but when it comes to restitution, Restitution in, in the form of amends, sometimes that could be rough, but confession, purging, getting out those things that we push down, and responsibility, um, being responsible for our actions. You know, sometimes it's really easy for us to make excuses for our behavior. Well, I'm messed up. What do you want? What do you expect? You know, um, but we have to be responsible. You know, not just for our past, but for the things that we do, right? Uh, when we're wrong, promptly admit it, right? So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to close up this series, but first let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Father, so much that you do meet every single one of our needs. But you don't force them on us. <laughs> you, don't, you don't force your will upon us. That we have to seek and accept your will for our lives. So help us, Lord. Help us. We know where our own will took us, um, and if we continue to stay in our own will, we won't be able to experience all the promises that you have for us. So help us, Lord, this morning, as always, to be completely honest with ourselves. Speak to us, Father, the words that you would have us not just to understand, but to know and to do. Help me, Lord. As always, Father, use me. I am your servant. Use me to help others. And I thank you, Father, for that responsibility. Again, Lord, I just thank you that you are here with us. I just pray, Father, that each one of us is able to respond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Healing. Closure. And then security. When I say that you never need a place like this again, that is 100% truth. But it takes you, right, coming into and then maintaining that relationship with him. Because what happens is when we stop doing, we 
stop praying, we stop, you know, being part of the church, we stop all these things, you know, you can list them, but almost every time when somebody relapses, that's the words that I hear, I stopped. Because it's a process that needs to be maintained as long as we are breathing. We can thank God for the breath in our lungs, but we have to see that as an opportunity to grow, not just to be alive, but to really live. So here are, here's number 10 of the 12 laws of life recovery. Confession will result in healing. We can't grow beyond our past until we've purged those things that hold us back. We experience something powerful when we confess our shortcomings and failures, not only with God, but also with another person. Healing comes as a result of confession. And I'll read James 5.16 in a second, but that's why I pray every day for my leadership, for God to help me, help you, but you have to be able to open your mouths and share what's really going on. You have to have someone else in your life, whether that's a counselor, a sponsor, a mentor, someone that God has put in your life that is there so that you might be able to speak truth about what's really going on. Because until it comes out, man, it just seems to sit there. And it holds us back. Confess your sins to each other. And pray for each other. So that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Again, there's that word righteous in re relationship to a person and again there was only one that was truly righteous which is Christ Jesus but we are called to do our best to be like Jesus to live right in God's eyes so when you seek somebody that you know is in the word and they're trying their best to follow God's will for their lives as as recorded in his word these are the people that you want to have in your life so that you might be able to speak the truths that you keep pushing down, right? Of what really is going on. The truth about really what is holding you back has to come out. We need each other. You need to be praying for me and for my wife and for the staff here. I am always praying for my leaders at headquarters that give me some of these crazy rules that the guys go, you guys go, oh, I can't understand why. But they're there for a reason. All of this is done in prayer. So you right first not only be needing to pray for your own right knowledge of god's will but for those that are in a position <clears throat> to help you whether that is your counselor or your sponsor or your mentor or your support group or whatever that is because without confession we still have those things in us god knows them Right? We get on our knees and we say, Lord, forgive me for these sins. You know, please take them from me. I seek forgiveness through Christ Jesus. We can do that. But there's great growth, necessary growth, um, by confessing those sins with each other and praying with each other so that you may be healed. Restitution. It's another one, because we hold on to these things. We can't be made right if we're still holding on to these things. Some of which, again, are so painful that we're afraid to, to share them. 
Until we explore ways to make all kinds of restitution, we will struggle with moving on and experiencing closure. We must make restitution where possible. We, we know what it is when, right, with the courts, right, when we have to make restitution. We know what that is. Um, but yeah, really, this falls under the making amends thing, right? That we have to now. Again, there's no there's no better way to make amends by than by changed behavior. There is no, I, really. I, I'm saying I believe that there's no way to make amends. There's no way to make restitution to the people that really matter without changed behavior. Words are never enough, especially when we used a lot of words to manipulate those that love us. They're not going to believe words. I was just sharing the other day, I'm getting ready to go to Philly, you know, the house I grew up in, and it was like I had like 10 years clean, right, in full uniform, visiting my parents, and I'm in the bathroom and I come out and my mom's standing at the door to see if I was in the medicine cabinet. See, so it takes a long time, especially with those people that we had used for a long time, lied to for a long time. And changed behavior is the only way that this is truly going to come about. But we have to change our behavior. We have to change our behavior. And don't get freaked out when they're st still standing there making sure you're not going through the medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. You know? Because that's going to happen. Numbers 5-7. They must confess their sin and make full restitution for what they have done. Adding an additional percent, 20%, and returning it to the very person who was wrong. Okay, so this is talking about actual, right? Financial restitution. But it means so much more to make restitution. Making amends. And the only way that we truly can, again, is by changed behavior. And that requires us to be responsible individuals, men of integrity, right? You hear that? Men of integrity, people that other people can trust. If other people can trust us, then maybe down the road, those that actually love us and care about us will see that difference and thank God, right, for our deliverance, for our change, right, through confession uh, and restitution, being responsible people. Responsibility will result in security, serenity, fulfillment, fulfillment. That word's been in my, my heart lately on my mind and in my heart when I when I think about <laughs> again I don't I don't want to seem materialistic or anything but as I get closer you know God willing in a couple of years when I start to look for my own real vehicle because the vehicles I drive aren't mine the vehicles that I do own I got one my 81 Honda gold wing that needs new valve seals and smokes like, you know, smokes like you guys do out in the courtyard, like Larry. And my, and my old Chevy pickup truck that I can't even get the spark plugs out of. They're like frozen in there. Mm, yeah. So as I look at all these vehicles that I might want to buy, God willing, someday, I sent one to my wife the other day. It's, 
You know, my favorite car that I owned was a 68 Chevelle 350 LT1 motor. It was nice. It was the nicest car I ever owned. I built a lot of Mopars, but that was the nicest car I ever owned. And there's one for sale on Marketplace. And I'm like, oh, if it was blue, we'd be taken out alone. <laughs> but I'm a responsible person. <laughs> and because of that, I don't have a mountain of debt. I was sharing the other day about my credit score, and it, you know, the fact that I have a good credit score blows my mind, you know. But those things, right, come from being a responsible person. That's materialistic. But what is really important is, and this is why I pray that God gives me the information I need to help you. I'm responsible to you. That I don't harm you in any way, that all of the things that I do is to help you to grow. We may not only, we have, we have not only made restitution, right, we have also begun to act responsibly in all areas of our lives. We experience a genuine sense of security when we are doing our part living responsibly in our everyday lives. And again, that really comes through that transformation of the way that we think. When all of a sudden we are praying for people, other, you know, we're, we have concerns for people other than ourselves, and we are praying for those people that... Um, when we see someone else, a brother in need, right, we, we try to help out in some way that we can. Genesis 17, 9 and 10. Then God said to Abraham, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. This is the covenant that you and your descendants must keep. Each male among you must be circumcised. Hmm. Um, let's, let's look at that, right? So even, even that odd thing about being circumcised, that means cutting away, right? Not being so overwhelmed with seeing a, a nice 68 Chevelle that I go and I buy that 68 Chevelle, um, even though there's other needs in my family that would be, I don't know, harmed, that would be neglected because I'm doing something that I want for myself. So I have to cut that away. Your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. And by doing so, by Following God's will, not mine. You know, and it's the other thing, too, with kids, right? They don't believe your words. Kids are smarter than the parents all the time. <laughs> that was a joke, right? Mm -hmm. That we could tell our kids a lot of things, but they're really looking at your actions. They're looking at how you live. So if we're living our covenant to God about following his will for our lives and not our own, are those that are behind us, right? They'll see that. That's what this is referring to. Serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I don't know why I read that. I know it by heart. And, and I joke a lot about the serenity prayer, too, because how long it was. I was years, let's see, from... 85 to 93, when I would be in and out, and I'd be in recovery, and I'd read this thing, I knew what the words meant. But it wasn't until I surrendered, right, confessed what was really going on in my life so that I could purge that from me, started my life the way that God would have me to live, making restitution, amends to those that love me, did I know what this really meant? Because in 
self-will, manipulation, survival mode. You don't know what this means. You know, it's what we seek in life to be at peace, right? You know, early on, it's just, we just want to get through the day and feel okay, right? The white knuckle days where we lay our head on the pillow and we thank God that we made it without using. We don't know peace yet, right? Until we've completely surrendered. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as Christ did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be responsibly happy, reasonably, I'm sorry, reasonably happy in this life and extremely happy with him forever in the next. We're not always going to be happy. Joy comes in the morning, right? But we can know joy. That temporary happiness that we might have felt putting a substance in our body, which really got shorter and shorter and shorter to it. It was like instantaneous and then went away and we were sick. That's not has nothing to do with this. This is happiness in the highs and the lows, in the haves and the nots, being okay with whatever comes, right? Because we know the end of the story, but we have to stay in it. We have to stay in it. So to end up the 12 laws of life recovery, the rewards are healing, closure, and security. All are promised, but they require confession, restitution, and responsibility. Men of integrity, changing our lives so that others might see and be happy for us. And that comes through being honest with ourselves. It says uh, with ourselves and another, right? After we've been totally honest with ourselves, looking at really what got us to where we are, what put you in this seat, what got you here, being honest with yourselves about it. So are you ready? That's what it takes, but it's up to you to put it into action. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much that you do make it all possible. I thank you, Lord, for, for um, the responsibility that you've given to me to serve others. You've entrusted me. And I don't take that lightly, Lord, and I ask always every day that you give me the guidance that I need, not only for myself, but for those around me. And I pray, Father, for each, piece, each person here that they come to you, surrender to you, that they might be able to work through all of these things so that they too then may understand the words even just that one word, serenity, what real peace is like. So I pray, Lord, that you help us. It starts with us confessing, being honest with ourselves, our sin. Being honest with you, we come in prayer, Lord. You've given us A way out, a way over, around, knock down that wall, soften our hearts, Lord. You, you've made that possible through Christ Jesus. So help us, Lord, to be, again, honest with ourselves, accepting that which you've given, which is your son, Christ Jesus, who lived as an example to follow. 
we can at least start there. You say, taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, we have been able to see and read about Christ and how he lived, how he treated people, how he interacted with others. But he came to die for our sins. That by accepting him into our hearts as our personal savior, we too die a spiritual death of our old self. We put the darkness behind us, Lord, and we accept Christ into our hearts, Lord, and the light goes on. We're able to see sin for what it is. The Holy Spirit gives us the guidance through each day so that we might be able to identify the thing. We know the ones of our past, but we might be able to identify sin before we act on it. And then you give us the courage to make the right decision. And I thank you, Lord. But it takes a repentant heart. So we must repent of our sins, turn and accept Christ, die of old self and become new, you transform the way that we think and we're able to then see, not as the world would see, but as you would have us to see and to know and to do. So I thank you, Lord, for that. And if there's things, Father, that we might still be acting on, but we know they're wrong, Lord, help us, Lord, now, right now, to lay them at your feet. Take them from us. And, Father, I pray, Lord, for each person here that you put someone in their lives that they trust so that they might be able to open their mouths and share what's really going on. Because that's how we get it out. You created us in that way. The church is the body of the believers. We need each other. So I thank you, Lord, for making that possible. I thank you, Lord, for all these things. And I thank you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.